This is Pat's Two Cents, reminding you that God's into love. We're God's Church of Love Online, and we are dealing with life. How to deal with the vicissitudes of life, the, the contentious people on our jobs, these last days, the all the stuff that's going on, all of the onslaught of the enemy. We are under attack, you guys. And we have to remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But I want you to hear this, this chapter. We're going to read Romans chapter 12. And I want you to apply this to your life. It'll make life so much easier. Starting at verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, the least you can do. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Pat's two cents. How does your mind get renewed? The word of God. All right. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm, mm, mm. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members, one body, many members in one body and all members have not the same office. So we being many, or one body in Christ, and every one members one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, with a prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. Or he that teaches on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. You don't suck your teeth and roll your eyes and fold your arms when it's time to show mercy. No, you do it cheerfully, willingly. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Now, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. <laughs> rejoice with them that rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits and recompense to no man evil for evil, proving things honest in the sight of all men. And if it if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Now, listen, 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 listen. This basically deals with all of life. It, it's all encompassing almost. God gives us gifts. Yes, he does. And no matter what is coming against you in your life, trust me when I say, God only allows those trials in our lives that are meant to build us up and strengthen us in our character. Also, the trials we go through are there to develop us. We are to develop our wings that enable us to fly in the spirit like a butterfly, break, breaking out of its cocoon. God creates change in our lives. And as I call it, as I oftentimes refer to it as resistance training, Satan comes against us. 
We are to resist the devil so the devil will flee. But while we're resisting, we're building up muscle. You cannot resist what is not coming against you. So you must expect things to come against you. You don't look forward to it. You don't enjoy it. But life comes against you. People come against you. Attitudes come against you. Sometimes, I remember Rashad was talking about the guy that was on his job that just blew up at him out of the blue. Well, sometimes, <laughs> this is a little comical thing you can come at people with sometimes. Sometimes you want to look at somebody when they come out of nowhere. Say, as Andrea, we were talking earlier saying, okay, is a great way to end all arguments. They can't argue with okay. But another comical approach is, are you on your period? <laughs> Walk away. Because there are people that don't realize Satan is using them. Male or female, I'm talking about. And it's really funny when you ask a man that, they're like, what? Listen, Satan uses people to come against you. Satan uses people to attack you, to attack your self-esteem, to, to bring all kind of heaviness into your spirit. You could have a wonderful day. Everything's going great. And then what does Satan do? He tries to spoil your feast of charity, so he brings someone against you. He makes them flare up against you. He makes their words rub you the wrong way. He makes you rub them the wrong way. And then they react and they don't know why. They don't get what's going on. But you must be constantly aware. This is how the enemy operates. This is not normal. If it is not normal, you can chalk it up to an attack, baby. And you can, you can pray this prayer at the beginning of the day, as Lynn said, before your feet hit the floor, read Psalms 91. Well, let me tell you, not only read the word, but ask God to cover you in the blood of Christ. And this is how you pray. This is a good way to start your day off. I command, take authority. I command all evil, all expressions of evil to stay as far away from me as the East is from the West. You go that route. Another thing you do is you bind all assignments. You cancel, you say this, I cancel every assignment against me in the name of Jesus. I rebuke, I bind, I cancel every form of retaliation in the name of Jesus. I say retaliation for this reason. When God is poised and in the process of blessing you and your blessings are beginning to materialize and they're building up your faith and you're getting all happy and excited, you have to watch. Those are the very times when Satan tries to come in with an onslaught of attacks to spoil your feast of charity, to spoil and kill your joy. Because he knows the word says the joy of the Lord is your strength. So in order to sap you of your strength, he must kill your joy. So he sabotages every good thing that's happening. And you can either lay down and roll over and take it, or you can rise up and resist it. Because every time you resist the devil, baby, you are building up muscles. And you always remember to resist the devil in the name of Jesus. That's when you're using the weapons. You use the weapons of prayer. You use the weapons of the name of Jesus. You use the weapons of your faith. You use the weapon of the word of God. Quote that word in his face. You use the weapon of praise, praising God. You use the weapon of prayer. The Bible says, be swift to hear and slow to speak. So when you're, while you're hearing and you're not speaking, to, 
to the enemy. You're speaking in the spirit realm, taking authority over this nonsense that's rearing its ugly head in your face. See, you have to learn how to do warfare. You have to learn resistance training. When you go to a gym, you have to have a trainer there teaching you according to your physical abilities and limitations, your age bracket, the whole nine yards. They teach you how to start, how to work the equipment, how to position your body so that you're not putting strain on the wrong muscles. Now, that's what God's word does. That's what God's Holy Spirit within us does. He empowers us. He gives us instant wisdom, but you have to pull on him. You don't just assume you got it. You ask God, Lord, tell me what to do right now. Tell me what to say. Let me know if I need to just keep my mouth shut. Lord, control my emotions. Don't let Jack jump out the box. Help me, Lord. Help me. Sometimes that's all you can say. But the bottom line is you keep everything in God's control. You keep everything under his authority. Ask him to handle everything through you so that your flesh doesn't take the stage. Your flesh should never upstage God. Never because your flesh will make matters 10 times worse. Trust me, leaning to your own understanding, reacting on your own emotions rather than the ways of God. Yeah, so it feels good sometimes. I know sometimes it feels good to tell somebody off, put them in their place, cuss them out, ream them out, give them a piece of your mind. Yeah, I know. But I'm going to tell you the results are far greater when you handle things God's way. Always far greater. Your growth is exponential when you're handling everything God's way. When you're consciously putting a conscious effort, you're not going to succeed all the time. I'll tell you that right now. But when you're putting a conscious effort on handling every opposition God's way, yeah, the winds of adversity, they come blowing at you, you blow back the word of God. You blow back in prayer. You blow the breath of God and the power of his Holy Spirit and the name of Jesus, the anointing. You blow that back in that wind's face. Listen, whatever's going on in these last days, whatever's going on on your job, Whatever's going on in your family, if you see division taking place, you rebuke the spirit of division. If you see sickness breaking out, you rebuke the spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. Everything you rebuke, always do it in the name of Jesus. If you see your anger rising up and you're starting to boil over like a volcano getting ready to erupt, you ask God to take the anger out right now in the name of Jesus. Give him instant control. Don't upstage the Holy Ghost. Let God handle it. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. You must always let God arise. Not you. God. At all times. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ask or think according to the power that works within you. What power is working in you? Is it the flesh working its power or is the Holy Ghost the one taking control in your life? See, things can happen. Things can happen that will blow your mind while, while the winds of adversity are blowing in your face. The Son of God is shining on you. His, his sunlight never stops shining on you, night or day. But what you have to remember is even in the darkest of night, that sun is still there. If you were to travel out in space and you look at the earth, you would see half the earth is in darkness. The other half is being lit up by the, by the sun, right? Picture this. The part that's in darkness 
they can't despair because they're in the darkness. No, that's their time of night. It's dark. It's nighttime. The part of the earth that's filled with light, the sun is shining. But guess what? The sun is shining whether they're on the dark side or the bright side. The sun is still there. It hasn't gone anywhere. It hasn't taken a vacation and decided to travel to another galaxy and see what's happening on the other side of the universe. The sun is right there. God is ever present. He's not going anywhere. So when the darkness happens in your life, you cannot lose hope. You cannot despair and say, well, God has turned his back on me. God has abandoned me. God is punishing me. God is cursing me. God is against me. God is not for me. That's a lie from the pit. Don't go for those lies. You quote opposite what you're feeling. You quote by faith, God is for me. And if God be for me, who can be against me? Now you're quoting the word into the situation. Yes, let God arise and the enemies be scattered. I will arise and shine for my light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon me. You quote those scriptures. You quote God is for me, not against me. God is on my side. I shall not fear what man shall do. Why? You know who's on your side. What does Psalms 24 say? The earth is the Lord's. Not the devil's. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That means every single thing associated with it, around it, above it, beneath it, everything in the earth belongs to God. So that means that God is the one in control, y'all. Not your enemy, not your opponent, not the winds of adversity. It's God. And if God's the one in control, God's the one you go to. You pour, the Bible says, pour your heart out to him. Mm. Casting all your care on him. Not some of your cares, all of them. For he cares for you. You're not in this battle alone. He will work every negative thing in your life to your good. If you keep putting every negative thing in your life in his hands, in his control, under his authority, not yours. You hear me? All right. Be encouraged. God will come through. What happened? Listen, sometimes in life, it seems like I'm trying to end, but this is coming to me. Sometimes in life, it seems like we're on the losing end. We're, we're getting the short end of the stick. <clears throat> And while it looks like we're on the losing end, in the dark, in the back, in the corner, all by ourselves with nobody there with us, and boy, we, we feel alone. We feel abandoned, and life is just, ah, oh, it's just heavy. We're just dealing with heaviness. Well, listen, no matter what you're feeling, no matter what's going on, always remember, God is a very present help in trouble. Therefore, you will not fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be cast into the midst of the sea. Ah! And what does Psalms 46 continue to say? There is a river, the streams thereof shall make glad the city of God. And then what does it say further down? Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted in the earth. I will be, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. God is on your side. He's pulling for you. He's working all things, even the bad for your good. No matter what, he's working all things out for your good. You are not alone in the situation. Trust me, you're not alone. Lean on him with everything you have. I want to read Psalms 46. I just feel like you need to hear that in your spirit. I want you to be encouraged by it. Because God is faithful to perform his word in our lives. So I want to read it into your life, into your spirit. All right. Psalms 46, you guys. 
God is our refuge and strength. Now, did you hear that? Think about that. God is not just your refuge, your covering, your shelter. He's your strength. See that strength you don't have? What you don't have to deal with this, that, or the other? God's got it for you. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Before you can get the p out of help, he's right there. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. Tell yourself, I shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. <laughs> Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. All that Satan throws against you, he'll burn up. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. God bless you on that note. Be encouraged. You're not alone. In these last days, in the beginning of sorrows, when you're being uh, attacked on your job or in your family, or even in your own little pea brain mind, God is a refuge and a very present help. God bless you.